So the first thing to do is just strip a little bit of the plastic away on both sides. Now, the reality is on the bottom, we'll be completely stripping the protective layer. But on the top, you wanna to leave that, and this is the top, you wanna to leave that protective layer on until you're done putting all the screws and trimming. The reason for that is you'll scratch up the polycarbonate. So you can see what's been done here. Uh, Lynette has gone ahead and peeled that protective layer and tape away from the edge. And then this tape here is specifically designed for uh, eight millimeter polycarbonate. And you can pick up HVAC tape at Home Depot, but it's wider. I think these are $12 a roll, 164 feet. And I think each uh, greenhouse kit has a two of those rolls, so it's more than enough. But what you do with that edge, and you can see the openings there, those openings are the ones that need to be protected. So what happens is Lynette's straddling that tape right in the middle of the panel, and you can see that it's going over uh, equally right in the middle of those, those channels. And once the top and bottom are done, um, those, that tape will be protected. On the bottom here, the tape is gonna be protected by the earth that's gonna be mounted against the polycarbonate. And up on top, you'll be protected with the ridge uh, metal, the ridge steel on top. And that'll keep that aluminum foil tape um, strong and in place for the duration of the life of the greenhouse. The butt joints placed after every panel is put into position and it's curved down to match the curvature of your greenhouse and it bends just fine, but you need to put a screw through it in the purlin. And one thing I've noticed is if you're not careful, you can put it off to the side too much and then it interferes with that male cover plate you put on top. So what you need to do is do your best to get that right in the middle when you're mounting your greenhouse material, your trim. The other thing that's occasionally forgotten is the protective layer on the back side here. Now we've removed it on these panels, but there have been situations where I personally have forgotten to do that. And it becomes a real nightmare to try to get that in later. So the panel is put into position and what we do uh, is roll it up. Now this is Bridger's task, uh, my son. He's actually at football practice this morning. We wanted to get a few panels up for him so he could come and screw them in. We're just putting a few uh, screws in. He'll come and screw them all in after practice. But if you don't get these panels in before the wind's above seven miles an hour or so, you're in real trouble. And you can see from that tree, we're already a little blustery. Um, the wind's blowing in this direction, so we can use the wind to help push the panel up. I get asked occasionally, why is it that in this design, uh, for the normal design, now you don't have to stick to 42 inch centers, three and a half feet. Uh, so that's the different distance between that hoop and that hoop. That's uh, 42 inches. And, the and these are one and seven eighths inch exterior diameter, 14 gauge tubes, so it's pretty robust. In most greenhouses you're gonna see uh, never go below four feet. They're gonna be four to six feet. I have one greenhouse on 80 inch centers thereabouts. Uh, that works fine in the snow. So what I'm getting at is, why is it that I go 42 inches here, and then on the very last one, I take off between three and six inches, depends on what it is. The design actually calls pull off six inches. So the last one is 36 inches from hoop to hoop. Okay, in this case, it's more like three. Uh, so I'll show that to you. The reason is these panels are seven feet wide. Actually, it's 82 and three quarter, but um, depending on what trim you're using for your butt joints, so I'm using the aluminum one. The gap between one edge to the other edge is anywhere between, you know, it's basically an inch, inch and a quarter. If I'm using the polycarbonate butt joint, it's inch and a quarter for sure. Uh, this stuff's a little bit tighter. So if you consider that the panels are 82 and three quarter inch wide and you measure from the end over, what you'll see is you're tight. So there I got 82 inches. Now, in this case, this frame's pretty good. I think, I think it's actually, I only made it about three inches shorter, not six. So I did have a little bit to spare, but a lot of times if your end walls are not straight, what will happen is you'll have to trim a little bit on your end wall. 
And when you trim a little bit, you're gonna be chewing up some of that, your available polycarbonate. So that's why it's always good to make it a little bit shorter than something divisible by seven. In this case, instead of going 49 feet, I'm, excuse me, instead of going 42 feet from one end to the other for this greenhouse, we're about 41 feet, nine inches there about, something like that. So um, it's it just keep that in mind. That way you're not stuck at the end needing another panel and more um, butt joint because that adds price. So it's well worth, you know, losing three to six inches of your space. So everything lines up really good. The polycarbonate on this one side, this happens to be the north side here. So ready to do the next side on the other side. We'll just go ahead and pull them up on top and then bring them over the top and set them down on the other side. Um, before I do that, I wanted to show you something. So if you look at this butt joint, this is the female portion of the butt joint. And you see a little, it's a packaging bend. That's just how they come when they're shipped. Uh, don't freak out about little dimples like that. You'll never notice it in your completed um, project. So if, if your trim has, a the aluminum trim has a few um, dimples here and there, or sometimes down here at the edge, you see that, how they're bent a little bit, it really is not a big deal. You, you'll never ever see that. This whole thing will be concealed. Same thing with the uh, J-channel. Um, J-channel, it's always gonna get a little dimpled, especially with packaging. But the reality is, when it, you can see some dimples there as I bend it. Reality is when you put it all in place, there's just, you're not gonna notice any dimples. It'll be rock solid when everything's done. I mean, you'd have to look really closely and nobody looks that closely. It's, don't even mess with it. But uh, otherwise, oh yeah, and one other thing I wanted to point out. Um, so sometimes when you're making your trusses, so when they squish these ends here at the factory, um, sometimes they're a little big. And what I mean by that is they enter intersect the tube so it ends up leaving a little gap and no matter what you do the the only alternative you have is and i've done this before is just put this on a composite saw and cut a little notch on there uh, so it fits perfect but the reality is the bolt's tight it's torqued it's not an issue uh, sometimes when you strip out your bolts so my son bridger he went ahead and put two nuts there there's ample nuts in this particular kit package to do that there's extras, so it really is not a big issue at all. Uh, so you notice some are loose, not loose, but some some are like they, they intersect, like this one, they intersect the, um, the tube, so you're left with a gap. But the reality is this is a tension member, and it, the sheer strength of that bolt is, is what your limiting factor is there. So it actually works out just fine, it's not an issue. They want to show you something else that you'll occasionally encounter, and that's where it's tight, like on one side and loose on the other side. And that gap's a little bit too much. You'd want it a little narrower than that. So it's pretty easy to fix. All you have to do is just go in and pull that screw out and just kind of just tap it over a little bit and, and make it equidistant. So in both cases, you know, I have three sixteenths there, and then you just screw it back in. So that'll actually take care of it so that when you put your, your top cap on, it'll go on really good and there won't be any issues. Okay, so we completed all the polycarbonate in here in three hours. Uh, we haven't done the end walls yet, but the end walls aren't too bad. You just roll them up and cut everything. But I wanted to show you, it, it really, and we were actually just walking. It was, you know, this is 12 panels here, so six per side. So what does that come out to be? I guess, I guess that is about four, four panels an hour. But um, yeah, so we were just kind of laying back. It was just my wife and I. So um, Bridger's my son, uh, this is his job. He is at a football practice and football brunch this morning. Uh, he's gonna come in and finish things up in here as far as the screws, but I wanted to show you just a few things. So first off, you wonder about that gap. Well, what the heck? Why are we leaving that gap there? Well, the reason is you're gonna be backfilling with at least four inches of compost in here. And when you do that, um, you can handle the, the gap two ways. You could buy some extra polycarbonate and have a lap joint. Um, but I just, I just don't see any value in putting polycarbonate in the base because it doesn't get any sun. So the cleanest and the smartest and the cheapest solution is when you're backfilling with some compost in here, 
just fill up that gap with some dirt and then you know it seals it up well and there's just no issues um, typically as far as screws go we're going to be going about error five screws per row so let me show you that each row so so there's the purlin and each row will have five screws now in our case we just put the panels up i'm gonna let my son put the screws on but i did put five over here just to demonstrate so you can see what it looks like. So that's about what you want. There's five screws, you know, approximately equidistant, but you know, I, I never take the time to measure it. Something else down here. Um, so you'll notice that the trim extends out a little bit more, not a big deal. Cause once again, you're gonna backfill down there and it's gonna look perfect. Nobody's gonna notice anything. Let me show you up on top. Cause I think there's a few key things to look at up there. You can see how I kind of lace this over. So you have a ridge here, and the ridge is one and nine sixteenths. So one piece goes over a couple. So right about there is the edge of the, the one and nine sixteenths inch ridge beam. So you can see on the bottom went over a couple inches from that. And same thing here. So you just basically lace it. I have these screws. They do not have the washers on them. So the washers would be these, you don't do that here. So this is just temporary, put these screws in to hold it. What's actually gonna hold this in place, we have a really thick um, ridge cap that goes over this. And once the ridge cap is on there, it'll tighten it down really good. And when it comes time to put that ridge cap on, what's gonna happen is we'll actually take a hammer and pound that edge down so it's all flush. And, and then the ridge cap goes over it, and it'll protect it. So you'll never even see that, it's perfect. The other thing worth looking at, so sometimes these uh, butt joints don't line up exactly. I'll have to bend that out a little bit before I put the top in. But you see this piece here, how it overlaps? I'll have to trim that off a little bit. You also notice how I only come up halfway on this ridge beam with the butt joint. So half, half. So they touch there and if you don't do it if you try to overlap it it's just a nightmare because you got to trim and everything it, it just doesn't work out well um, something else to look at over here so you see how the gap on this side is a little wider than that side quite a bit now what i'm going to have to do there when it comes time to put that ridge cap on i'll pull that screw out and i'll just shift this over a little bit so that gap's not so full and that way the ridge cap is going to fit fine you can see all the way down it's it's about half an inch. I don't, you know, you lot want to stay maybe a quarter inch or less, maybe three sixteenths. So um, I'll fix that when we put it together. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, it only took three hours to get the panels prepped and up. It really doesn't take long. They roll up pretty good. 